Movies with a low rating on Rotten Tomatoes are common, but to get a 0% rating takes a certain kind of awfulness. Sure, it's usually not the type of perfect the filmmakers were going for, but to get any kind of perfectly unanimous response on a film is quite a feat. Though watching a bad movie on purpose can seem like a complete waste of time, some of these just have to be seen to be believed. Find out how things can go so wrong so fast with these critical bombs you should watch anyway. Manos, The Hands of Fate It's one of the best episodes of Mystery Science Theater 3000 and one of the strangest films of all time. From the beginning, everything about Manos, The Hands of Fate was a bad idea. Hal Warren told Oscar-winning screenwriter Sterling Siliphant that making a movie was easy. He figured it was so simple he bet Siliphant that even he, a lowly fertilizer salesman, could finish a picture. When your grand artistic vision stems from winning a bet, you're already off to a bad start. So Warren raised $19,000 from friends and family and started filming Manos. He crafted a complicated story about a family that gets lost on vacation and stumbles upon a cult leader that tries to turn all the women in his family to his stable of bickering brides. You are a troublemaker. You deserve to die. It could have been something simple, but it wasn't. Manos is definitely not a cash grab. Instead, it's a bizarre expression of art. Though everything about it is strange, there did seem to be some attempt at making a real film. At the end of the day, Manos is a movie about a real family coming together, giving their all, and trying to make art no matter how low budget or strange. Roller Boogie this disco-infused roller skating wreck was supposed to be a breakout role for Exorcist alum Linda Blair. If she wanted to get as far away from her Exorcist casting as possible, the idea of doing a harmless roller skating picture doesn't sound like a bad idea, right? Now I can't wait. Okay, maybe it was a bad idea. Unfortunately, everyone hated the film, and it did little to lift her career. Roger Ebert wrote, I didn't think it was still possible in the dog-eared final days of the 1970s to have this silly, innocent, lame-brained, and naive movie. The fact that the film contained all disco music, which was fading in popularity, didn't help matters. Xanadu came out the next year, just to double-check that the nation was truly over roller dancing. Yeah, we were over it. Heart beeps. Seriously, folks, I'm here to tell you about this new movie. It's called Heart Beeps, and it's about me and my pal. Andy Kaufman and Bernadette Peters star as two robots who were created to be human companions. When they meet each other, they fall in love and run away, which is kind of cute, but that's not the whole story of Heart Beeps. There's also a tank-like robot called Crime Buster who's come to hunt them down, a garbage child robot that Kaufman made from spare parts, and Catskill, a corny stand-up comedian robot who serves no purpose whatsoever. But believe me, folks, this movie's got a lot going for it. Though the movie is weird and a lot of the jokes are hokey, what makes it all the more strange is the robot design. Peters looks like some kind of overly oily first-generation fembot. Kaufman's robot could be a carbon copy of a two-tan Chevy Chase. Kaufman appeared in so few films, it's worth watching Heartbeeps for that alone. And it also serves as a warning that even the funniest people can manage to make awfully unfunny things. Megaforce Star Wars is one of the most influential films of all time, but one of the biggest effects of the sci-fi blockbuster was the crazy amount of rip-offs that followed in its wake, like the epic failure Megaforce. Megaforce is about, you know, explosions and laser guns. It's hard to admit, but even after multiple viewings, the only thing from Megaforce that will be mega-impressed upon your brain is Barry Boswick's booty. Now, that's not to say this film isn't worth watching. The weird mix of comedy and action plus the utter lack of a budget make this a pretty funny watch. You won't get some intricate tale of space intrigue, but you will get to see one of the worst flying motorcycle special effects. Seriously, who thought that looked good? Plus, there's the added bonus Barry Boswick with bleached hair looking like a rejected Gibb brother. As the New York Times review of the film put it, the combination is original, just as a peanut butter and olive loaf sandwich might be, but it isn't any good. Staying Alive 
Though you may only remember Saturday Night Fever for its disco dancing and white bell-bottoms, it's actually a really great film about lower-class kids trying to find some good and hope in their lives. As the sequel to Saturday Night Fever, Staying Alive has none of that. In Staying Alive, Tony Manero has moved to Manhattan and wants to be a dancer on Broadway. Unlike the first film, where Tony is a charming but troubled young man, here, Tony is just an all-the-time jerk. Now, in addition to the Bee Gees, we get the dulcet tones of Frank Stallone, brother of Sylvester Stallone, who directed the film. The dance numbers are bizarre, the leotards are cut high, and the story is just garbage. But it's great garbage. Mac and Me Another film from the rip-off department, this D-grade E.T. has the double distinction of trying to capitalize on Spielberg's incredibly successful film and being a great excuse for blatant product placement. MAC stands for Mysterious Alien Creature, and it turns out that Coca-Cola, not Reese's Pieces, pleases this alien. Although MAC is way more fond of product placement than his Spielbergian counterpart. A whole scene is devoted to a birthday party held at McDonald's that features Ronald McDonald himself and enough of the chain's logos to fund the production company's next five knockoffs. There's also a dance number, which E.T. is notably lacking, so at least one thing was different. A Seriously, it just goes on like that. Another reason to see this one? Almost every time Paul Rudd goes on Conan to promote a film, he switches out the clip of his own movie with the same clip of Mac and Me. Rudd has done this for over a decade, and for some reason, it never gets old. Simon Says Simply watching a Simon toy light up for an hour and a half would contain better acting than this Dennis Rodman sequel. The original, entitled Double Team, featured the bad boy basketball player and Jean-Claude Van Damme teaming up to kick butt and give horrible line readings. Their styles are different, very different. For the sequel, Van Damme did not return, so they got the next best thing, Dane Cook. The movie has a lot of, quote, comedy, and plenty of Rodman looking cool while super fake explosions happen behind him. The film is a great reminder of a time when Rodman was a really big deal. 1999 feels so, so far away. Pinocchio If you want to see the second worst film of all time, sit down for a terrible evening with Pinocchio. No, not the Disney version. The 2002 Roberto Benigni vehicle. After winning two Oscars for Life is Beautiful, America was charmed by this excitable Italian and couldn't wait for what wonderful film he'd bring to us next. Unfortunately, the next film he brought was this one. It's Pinocchio! Pinocchio! It's odd enough that a 49-year-old Benini decided to play the small puppet child, but the American version had to make it even weirder. Instead of dubbing the film with Benini's accented voice in English, Brecken Meyer of Road Trip fame was chosen. The 30-something voice of Meyer coming out of the nearly 50-year-old body of Benini is simply disturbing. Plus, the fairy tale film has a good moral. Say no to a film where you play a 10-year-old if you're pushing 50. Ballistic X vs. Sever now, it's true that all these films have a 0% rating on Rotten Tomatoes, but the crown of worst of the worst has to go to Ballistic X vs. Sever. A lot of films that reach this level only have a couple dozen reviews. Since there are fewer critics chiming in, the odds of a perfectly bad score are a little better. But X vs. Sever was a major release, and a lot of critics agreed that it deserved the ultimate F. 116 critics, to be exact. They all agreed this movie was garbage. It beats the next worst movie by almost 50 critics. Ouch. What makes this film so hated? Critics seem to agree that the movie has a convoluted plot, no character development, and a ton of messy-looking explosions that all just blend together after a while. Still, it's worth watching just to see what Rotten Tomatoes considers the very worst of them all. Thanks for watching. Click the looper icon to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Plus, check out all this cool stuff we know you'll love, too!